said you were running late because you had to pick somebody up. Yeah. What happened? I, uh, on my way to the gym, I had, had seen the lady that you know that lives near here, and uh, I asked her did she need a ride. Did she need a ride down the way? Yeah. And she was like, yeah, but you know, once I got halfway down there, she told me she had to go to a different destination. So I was like, so I took her out of bus route already. So I was like, ah. So I had to take her. I had to take her to where she had to be. How far did you end up driving? Uh, I had to go all the way down to 16th and Ridge. Okay. So I had to go. I had to come all the way past, you know, the whole yeah, this yeah. whole area. So. That's cool. Yeah. Talk about your job outside of uh, the boxing. We'll talk about the uh, Federal Reserve. Uh, yeah, the Federal Reserve. You know, that's my nine to five. I'm there from. Uh, I switched my hours now from 8:30 to 4 because, you know, a lot of times I had to take my son to school and it's, it's hell waking up that early. And, you know, getting getting that getting that start. So I was always late. So uh, I just switched my job. I mean, switched my hours. But uh, I mean, it's, that's that's part of life. I mean, my my nine to five. You know, I'm, I'm working just like you know, all you guys. And you know, on top of that, I'm 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 being a boxer. You know, I'm trying to trying to put as much as time as I can into it. And you know, I'm doing I'm doing good at it. You only have one kid. Or? Yeah, one one son. Make yourself. Yeah. Does it become harder to go to your day job? As yeah, you it, it becomes harder because uh, you know I'm I'm more recognized now. And, uh, you know, I just get tired of, you know, answering questions from guys. I'm like, yo, yo, so, you I mean, I'm like, if you, if you guys want to be, you know, interviewers or reporters or, or whatever, you, journalists, I said, just, just join, just join the club. But, yeah, that's, that's the hardest thing that really, that, that really, that it really is because I, I wind up answering the same questions literally, literally 20 times a day. And, you know, a lot of people act like they got amnesia. Oh, so I heard you got a big fight coming up. I said, I told you that yesterday. He <laughs> said, yeah, well, what date is it? 14, that's Friday, right? Yeah, up Sands Casino. Oh, so you didn't know, huh? So it's just like it just get real hectic, and sometimes I get very impatient and very aggravated and irritated. Not in the mean way, but it's just like, oh, come on, y'all, give me a break. You had a very busy 2012 with Brian Wright. So, uh-huh. so this is a bit of a, a longer break than, uh, than, than used to, you know. Um, any chance that that might be a little bit of a problem? Uh, no. Nah. Just welcome, welcome to the fight game. It's Freddie. It's Freddie would say. Welcome to the fight game, man. You're gonna have some you're gonna have some obstacles, you're gonna have some some time off, you're gonna have some some things that may permit you not to be able to box for a while. But uh, you know, it's just a fight game, you know. You know, boxing has a whole lot of, you know, situations, politics, uh, you know, things like that. I know you got proposed um, for a cattle shot with Klitschko mm-hmm. um, months ago. Um, you know, some people might say, well, you know, maybe that's a little quick or anything. But Russell said, hey, you know, you know, he wants it, he wants it not. You know, he thinks, yeah. you know, I mean, it's just from, that, from that standpoint, I mean, is anybody saying, hey, you know, um, uh, only 16 pro fights, maybe, uh, maybe uh, you need to, to dial it back just a notch, you know? And, nah, uh, nah, because it's, because it's been done before. You know, I can see if it's never been done before. I'm not, I'm not trying to do, th- do something that, that's never been done before. It's been done before plenty of times. I mean, you look at a guy, even though uh, Rigondeaux only ha- you know, has over you know, 300 amateur fights, but still, so what? You know, when you get into the pro game, everybody knows that pro game is way different from, 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 from the amateur, so you have to adjust. But, you know, just because I started, I'm, 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 on, I'm on my path. Right? I mean, I got the heart, I got the will, and I have the skill. And I just, I just think that, you know, I wouldn't have done no worse than any of the guys that, that went in there. And I, would, I wouldn't have went in there to try to beat instead of just trying to get a paycheck. So I want, I want to win. I want to beat them. So I, I don't want to just go in there and just get knocked around and say, okay, that's the end of my fighting career. Because you look at all the other guys who actually fought them. After they fight them, you don't hear them no more. Where's their marketing skills? Where's their business mind? Like, they just they just in it just for that one check and they get settled, and then that's it for them. They don't have no drive. They don't really want it. Hey, so when do you think you can land a shot with one of the Klitschko's? Ain't no telling. Welcome to the fight game. It's, it's, and y'all, y'all, can, y'all can name the interview there. Yeah, welcome to the fight game. Because, I mean, it's just boxing. You know, I, I realize that it's a whole lot of things, you know, uh, with boxing that, 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 you know, that you really don't understand when you first come into it. Boxing's a business. And, you know, you got to run it and treat it like a business. And, and you know, I'm, I'm the athlete. I'm, I'm the boxer. And it's, 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 hard, it's harder for me, you know, because I have to, you know, do, 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 do the labor, do the hard work. But it's just it's even harder for people that's working hard for me, you know, such as my team. So it's just, it's just real aggravated. It's just like, it's just something that we just got to calm ourselves down with. But I'm getting more calm and getting more comfortable with boxing because 
I know how the fight game go. Trying to go for a heavyweight championship in this day and time, mm -hmm. you know, the era of the Klitschko's, there, there's two mindsets. There are a lot of people out there who have, or manage or train or promote, you know, a quote unquote a contender. Their feeling might be, let's wait till these suckers retire because they're, you know, uh, they're not getting any younger. And then, you know, maybe we can fight for a vacant title and then we can back our way into it. Uh, your thing is, is that, hey, if, if I want to be heavyweight champion, I want, I want to get it by beating the toughest son bitch out there, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and then it'll mean something, you know. Um, your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, just like I just said, boxing is a business. And you know, your market and ability. If if we wait until the market the, the market value of a heavyweight champ goes down by him retiring, of course everybody's gonna say, Well, we know we're gonna have ten champs within the next five years. No, but if I'm able to take that from them, I get to I get to hold that market and value and I get to be that elite heavyweight and therefore my market and value don't decrease. This is a boxing this is boxing the ways though we get hit. We hit we take hits and this is not a sport that you're supposed to be in very long. Who has time to wait around? You know, a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of times I have to exercise my patience. Patience is patience is, is, is very much needed in this boxing game. So, you know, like like I like I just said two times before, I'm gonna say it three times. Welcome to the fight game. Was it hard to get ready for this guy when you were so nah, excited um, to fight Klitschko? Nah, I was I was I mean I was excited that I was being mentioned. Um, you know, because because it brought a lot of publicity, it, it brought a lot of recognition. That we're so okay now. People are really starting to pay attention to me, and you know, I hope they I hope they take this guy serious. You know, uh, but you know, it was it wasn't it wasn't hard to prepare for because I live this every day. I do this I do this every day. It gets tougher and tougher towards the fight because you know you work harder and you work out more more times a day, and you know you, you start in your early mornings, late nights, and you know you barely get to sleep. And you know you're trying to balance out everything, so uh, so it, it wasn't it wasn't hard. It's just it's just it's like any other fight. What do you think the career has really done for for the community? You know, for kids that coming in out of ABC, and, you know, people like you know the woman that you grow. What do you think it does? For uh, this community? I, I, I think it gives this community confidence, and it gives them something to be proud about. Because not only am I a great heavyweight or great boxer in this in this American day, I I'm a, I'm I'm considered a celebrity to many, and. Being so you can have a celebrity that you see every day and you know you see his work and you see he's still in the field and he's still doing what he's doing you see him every day you get to shake his hand you get to be around him and give people confidence or just to give people something happy something some somebody to just say that they know say oh they go be wild right there and hey be wise on his way here and he's coming and it's just you know when they brag you know it's like kind of it could get even territory the way it was like oh 21st Street, North Philly got the best fighters, and you know South Philly got the best fighters. Oh, we got BYU, we got Danny, we got you know. It just get you know, it just get real competitive, and just get people more confident. And then as the young folks that's in here, I mean, I mean, come on, it's like that gives them more drive to where as though I want to be like BYU, even if I never make it. I may be the stepping stone for one of the young kids to just be paying attention to me and follow and follow my path, and just and just come through and boom, make a stomp in the boxing in the boxing world, just. And just come way past me. Yeah, you mentioned, you know, marketability, business. Obviously, professional boxing, there is a business component. How much money can you make and put away and all this other stuff. And then there's the sport end of it. There, there are guys in this business that, hey, you know, this is the way I can make the most money. And there are other people that just like to fight. I mean, and, and my, my question for you is, how much of this is... The business, the business end, and, and, and mostly are all the business end. How much of is it? Did you actually enjoy this? If you had a chance to make as much money doing something else, you know, would you? Uh, well, well. First of all, let me say I'm a very disciplined individual. So whatever I do, whatever I get into, I know what it takes to get to the top of that game. So I'm not going to sit here and say boxing is not part of, it's not business. I'm in here because I, I didn't see fit. I didn't see a way out of out of the, out of the hood. So, um, you know, and I, and I felt as though working a regular job just wasn't going to do it for me. And I figured, though, I found something that would take me over that hump and to get me into that financial financial bracket to where so I could be successful to provide for me and my family. So boxing is definitely, uh, business is definitely, is definitely the first. First, you got to get business first because at the end of the day, you're still putting your health on the line. You're still putting your family on the line. You got a whole lot of sacrifice, a whole lot of sacrifice. You know, your bills is, your bills want to be being paid late. You know, you you know, you forgetting about certain, you forgetting about people, you forgetting about family. You just go into this into this cave, 
And it was, it was like, look, only way to get out of this cave some, to some people to please them is either time or money. And I can't give you my time, but I can help my family with money because I know they still love me. And I know it takes much patience for a family member to just say, well, Dad, Brian, haven't, he haven't called me. He hasn't, he hasn't been coming around, but I have faith in him that he'll succeed in doing what he's doing. I know he's on a mission, and I forgive him for that. And he, whenever he's ready to come back to the family or whenever he's ready to devote more time, which he, you know, when he has it, he's, he's welcome back. And open on. So the business, business is definitely number one. I know what I got to do. I know I got to work hard, fight hard, train hard in order to be successful in both. Do you like fighting, though? Uh, I, I've grown to like fighting, yeah. It's, if, if it's something that I'm good at, then, then yeah, I like it. If, I'm, if I wasn't good at it, I, I probably wouldn't like it. Do you feel the passion when you're fighting? Yeah, I feel the passion when I'm fighting because I'm, I'm compared to a lot of the other guys. And, and, and I'm, in, I'm an icon in Philadelphia, you know, amongst, amongst other boxers also. But, you know, I'm one of the icons in Philadelphia. So it was like, yo, like, don't, I'm, I can't play with that. I can't take that for granted. So I got to live up to that. What do you know about this guy that you're going to fight? Uh, I, I, I don't know nothing about him. I, I, I barely seldom know anything about any of my opponents. You look like in, when you're sparring today. You look like you're doing more crouching and like. Yeah, well, yeah. I was, is I, that for this fight or is nah, that just something nah, that, in general? That's, that's that's just me. You know, I I, I was kind of trying not to open up on guys. I just just let them be get comfortable punching. Just get through the work conditionally. Uh, you know, when I when I work on other things, you know, I work on my techniques. And you know, even though you're supposed to let it all out in the ring, I, which I do, but I mean, it's just kind of. Uh, I was I was I was just working, getting through the work. Because, you know, we did train early this morning, and, uh, you know, we did, we did five miles. My fastest mile this morning was uh, six minutes and four seconds, by the way. And uh, <laughs> five miles, 20 minutes on the pads, and I went up, went up in the house and did push-ups, sit-ups, you know, drunk a smoothie, and then tried to lay back down, get some sleep, and wake up for, to come here. Has it, has it been um, frustrating, or how different does it feel not having the full schedule that you had last year? I know, you know, you like a busy schedule. Um, how anxious are you to get in there? Uh, I'm pretty anxious. Just, 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 to, just to showcase, just so I can, you know, I haven't created any rust, but uh, you know, just, just to stay busy, just to stay with the flow. You know, I gotta stay. I'm a busy type of guy, so I gotta stay busy. So speaking of busy, you know, you had five fights in 2012, mm -hmm. but you know, this is nearly, you know, midway through the year, and mm -hmm. it's gonna be your first fight in 2013. So, mm -hmm. what's been holding things up? Boxing world. Welcome to the boxing game. Welcome to the fight game. You know, it's just a lot. It's a lot of things that come with it. You know, some things you got to get situated. Some things that you know that take place. Some things that we can't help. You know, obstacles coming our way, and you know, you just iron them out and just 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 get through it. But at the same time, you got to maintain your focus, maintain your shape, your mentality, and everything can still be there. Did you uh, have an interview last night with uh, anybody? Yeah, I, I did an interview with uh, Shabari uh, Davis. Yes, yeah, yeah, with uh, radio show or something. Box and Socialist, I think. Yeah. No, what is it? Block talk radio, it, it's small like talk that. radio. Yeah. But um, you know, doing small things like that, do you think that goes in with being a celebrity in North Philly? You know, you think doing stuff like that kind of pushes your brand a little bit? Yeah, it, it definitely does because you know all 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 different type of cities and states. You know, listen to listen to you know uh, shows like that. And um, even when I go when I go out of state, I'm just as big as out of state as I am in Philly because you know uh, when I go out of state, they 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 never see me. They never even thought of seeing me now unless they come to Philly. So when they see me, it's like, oh, there's Brian Jennings. Even if I'm just this small, you know, this small boxer, you know, in the world, it's just like, hey, I've just seen a professional boxer. I just shook hands with a professional boxer. A lot of people love boxing that much, and and it, it's great to you know, be on like, uh, you know, sites and, and and radio shows and stuff like that because it definitely pushes the brand. A bunch of years ago, I asked Roy Jones a question. This is when Roy Jones was still at the top of his game. Mm -hmm. Nobody had ever come close to even pushing him. It, you know, knocking them down or, you know, cutting them up or any of that stuff. For Antonio Tarver and Glenn Johnson and some of the tougher guys they had, I asked him, I said, you know, you've never really been in a tough spot where you were cut up, maybe down, you know, you know, in trouble, in really deep trouble or something like that. How do you think you react? And he said, I don't know. I haven't been there. Hope I'm never there. And you, you might have had uh, one or two semi uh, mm -hmm tough little moments, but but really, 16 and 0, you haven't been that. Do you ever question in your mind what would happen if you find yourself in a situation like Arturo Gatti or Matthew Saad Muhammad found themselves in, where you had a fight 
desperate because uh, maybe you were badly cut or, or been down a couple of times? You uh, don't never get that question answered until you find yourself in that situation. Well, well, you always, as a smart individual, um, and as a smart boxer and a person who's being taught by a smart trainer, you know, we go through that all day in, in training. And you know, a lot of that is just common sense. Two ways though, it's like, I mean, if we know what, if I know it takes heart and I know it takes will to complete a fight and, a fight and battle, then, you know, in the midst of, in the midst of pain or in the midst of an injury, through, in, in a fight, we know we just got to push through it. We can't show no signs of weaknesses. You know, fear is an emotion that's only supposed to be shown in the presence of God, and nobody in that boxing ring is him. So, I mean, we just keep pushing through it, and, you know, we, we fall, we get back up. Plain, 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 plain and simple. You know, it's been a long time since the, the heyday of, of Tyson, Holyfield, Riddick Bowe. You know, and people have been saying, matter of fact, just this Saturday night at the at Atlantic City uh, Boxing Gala, uh, Ken Condon said, what what we really need in boxing, and he meant American boxing, was we need we need an American heavyweight champion because mm -hmm. the, the, the champions are over in Europe, they're fighting in Europe. I know that you take a lot of pride in representing Philadelphia, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if you fight one of these guys, I mean, you know, if, if, if there's somebody there, you know, in USA, USA or anything mm -hmm. like that, but then, does that mean anything to you that, that, that it's been a while since somebody's carried the banner of American heavy boxing? You know, uh, really yeah, that's 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 more so the reason of my push uh, because it's not common. Something is not common, and, and I have the ability to do it. So you know, why not? That that gives me the extra push. You know, um, and I know how important it is for America to have another heavyweight champion because it hasn't been here in a long time, a long time. And and if I could be that person. I know that's community agreements, and at the end of the day, <laughs> the business, uh, the, the, the idolizing, uh, everything is just, because I'm, I'm a good role model, I have a son, and I want my son, I wouldn't mind if my son lived the same exact life that I live, because I don't do nothing in front of my son, or I don't do nothing behind closed doors with my son that I won't have for my son to do for himself when he get of age or my age, so, I mean, I, I, just, I just try to, you know, make a, be an example for the youth or the future that's coming up, and... And just, just just to be you know just just to be that person to look up to. So, all in all, being that next heavyweight champion of America uh, of the world for and as an American is, is is bigger than anything right now. It's bigger than anything. That's the goal. Hey, Bright. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, fighting on NBC is not as much money as fighting on an HBO mm -hmm. show, but it's important to you. Why? Uh, because it's just you get another fight. Period. Uh, you just you get it, you get to be able to showcase still on national television. Um, it's it's it's, it's going to come a time in where so, you know I'll, I'll be on that level, uh, which 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 I believe that I am. But you know, for whatever for whatever reasons, you know, it's just you know this this this, this is how the game go. But to it if to to be able to fight you know on the national screen is is, is a blessing. It's, it's, you know, pe people look up. People look up to me and look at NBC Sports as like a, you know, as a Showtime or HBO. And I feel proud that I can make it. You know, appear to be so. And and hopefully one day that that we that that me and uh, and the fellow boxers and and uh, main events can can push for that to be as big or even bigger than HBO NBC or, or or Showtime. Uh, because it's, it's something small coming up, but it's definitely showing great attention to the heavyweight division. Uh, no other, no other network has, has has given heavyweight division more more exposure or, or, or more recognition than NBC Sports. So you definitely got to shout out NBC Sports for that. And uh, it's, it's it's definitely a great show. It's something that that can help bring boxing back. Anything anything good for boxing is good for boxing. You know. Um one of the things is I know that you came to boxing relatively late. You know, it was like you didn't grow up dreaming that you would be heavyweight champion and probably thought about playing in the NFL. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, um, are there, you know, what boxers do you admire? And, and even going back a little bit, what heavyweight boxers do you see a little bit of yourself in or maybe... Uh, you know, maybe you might try to pattern yourself a little bit. I mean, Ellen was involved very heavily with the, the, the glory days of Vander Holyfield's uh, career. 
Yeah, I, I would consider myself as a band that, you know, at, at first, you know, with the will and, you know, just being, well, right now I'm undersized in the heavyweight division. But, uh, you know, just the will, but I, but but now as I get older, the more smarter I get, the more I pay, the more and more I pay attention, you know, the more I would like to just, you know, I would like to take the best attributes of a few different fighters and put them all together and consider myself as that person. Because, you know, a lot of people had their flaws. You know, like I said, boxing is a business, and we know, you know, in order to be a successful person, all in all, you have to be successful in, 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 in every category. And a lot of guys wasn't. So, you know, I, but when you when you put it in, you know, boxing perspective as just being in the ring, you know, of course, the greats like uh, Holyfield um, and Muhammad Ali and, you know, the Mike Tyson in his day, uh, you know, the Larry Holmes, you know, the Floyd Mayweathers, Andre Woods, Bernard Hopkins, those perfectionists. Uh, then, then I would pat, I would like to say I pat myself behind all of the above. Hey, um, World Boxing News. They, they put out this. You got a um, a uh, IBF eliminated with Kubat Prulev um, offered to you, but it was only you know twenty five thousand um, dollars. Can you confirm or that? Yeah, well, I, I, I already confirmed that. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we all know what Prulev is doing. You know. Uh, it's very something you get people, three people that just turn you down. He's not he's not the big bad wolf. So you know everybody needs to know that it was something, you know, that everybody was just like denying and was turning it down. It wasn't because of him and his ability. We all know that's you know, he, they they put out they put out a bum offer and you know wasn't nobody gonna take it. But that's the problem with the heavyweight division now. You got you got people like him that's that's there putting out bum offers and it's like we we don't want to take that type of chance to you know make that you know very little money. So therefore, he gets to sit around and clog up that number one spot. And if nobody wants to fight him, then he gets to clog up the mandatory spot. Now he's mandatory. Now we gotta wait for you know for the champ to fight them. Even if they fight, they sit around and somebody may get hurt. It's just it, it just get real just get real frustrated. Okay. What does it take to to get one of the clutch goes in the ring? I mean, you know, some of the. Patterns or that we've seen in the past was, you know, hey, you know, just, you know, call them out, say nasty things about them, get them pissed off, you know, maybe that'll, that'll work. I mean, um, what, what are Kathy and, 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 and Russell doing, you know, to make it happen? I mean, uh, what do you feel like you need to do to make it happen? Uh, I would have to talk to him myself. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Because nobody knows. Like, if we knew. If, if there was a successful strategy, then we'd go about it that way. But uh, we don't know, I man. It's even hit or miss. Like we we don't know what's in their minds. We don't know if they fear me or if they just overlooking me. Or we don't we don't we don't know what it is. But we know that they do this a lot, and it's it's very hard to get a fight with them. Even as an American now, you know, you know uh, the last American to fight him, I think was a uh, was a uh, Tony Thompson, I think. Whatever it was, but that was just like so long ago. Right? You know, um, there was a Philadelphia fighter who fought Vladimir and um, got knocked out in the twelfth round. And Eddie was Chambers. Chambers. Was Eddie Chambers? I mean, how you know Eddie? Uh, if so, how much? And have you talked to him about about Vladimir? Uh, yeah, I know Eddie real well, but I never talked to him about uh, about how how he got that. But I, I think I think you have to go to their camp. And and pretty much, they got they got to see what you, they got to test you, see what you're about. Therefore, they know what they're getting themselves into. They know if they can handle you or not. And I mean, that seems to be the only way because every one of their fighters, you know, was one of their sparring partners. So I mean, that's that's one of the strategies. But a lot of times, I say, you know, I don't want I don't want you to come come figure me out. I want I want to fight you. I want to take it in the ring with you. But I mean, I don't know, man. Maybe maybe that may change for me. Who, who knows? But. I, but we, we, we gotta get we gotta get there before this before this uh title go vacant and you know the heavyweight division be up for grabs and then we fighting like fighting like cats and dogs just just just, just you know scrape up some 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 business value in, in the heavyweight division. Yeah, because you know, we've seen this any number of times. If there is if there's a great champion and he retires or vacates or, or whatever it is, and they fight for a vacant title. A lot of people are going to say, even if you win that title, well, he didn't beat so and so. Yeah. You know, I mean, then, yeah, he always going to have something to say. Always. Just like now, they say I'm undersized, and uh, he'll tell you the, the, the list that they had. Uh, it was a, who who did the list? 
No he thought I was gonna keep that away. Who did that? <laughs> All right, here's the list right here. Oh, yeah, here, yeah. here it is. He bought, he bought it on paper. Okay, uh, the list is this is the top 10 top ten heavyweights in America. Number one, and I told him that that, that I agree or, or that I respect this disposition for Malik Scott at number one. Uh, number two with Tony Thompson. This, this pretty much just because he got that big one over David trying, Price. He's trying to justify that. It just beat David Price. It's a big win. <laughs> but who was David Price? It was, he was, you know, on the cusp of being, you know, on a top ten rated guy. He was, yeah, you know, I mean, but who is he? He was England's best hope. You know, uh, I think, I think Tony Thompson did more than just beat David Price. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But he's, I'm not going to take away from him, even though he's still, a, he's still around him. That may be the only way I respect that because he ha he is a veteran. He's been around, but who really has he for? Right. But, uh, well, he's only lost to Vladimir in like the last 13 years. Yeah, but who really has who, who has he really for? Where would you put yourself at? So what's the deal? You're not on that list. Oh no, he's, so, no, he's I'm, on the list. I'm, I'm number seven. He's on the oh, list. You see yourself. I'm number seven. Um, I would see myself with this list right here. And all right, let me let me read out. Number one is Malik Scott. Number two, Tony Thompson. Number three, Jonathan Banks. Number four, Steve Cunningham. Number five, Chris Ariola. Number six, Deontay Wilder. Number seven is myself. Number eight, Amir Mansour. Number nine, Joe Hanks. Number ten is Kevin Johnson. Okay. Now, number one, Malik, my man. But I'm had to put myself there because this is the interview of mine. This is what we, this is where we at. Number two, I'll put Malik. Number three, I will put Amir Mansour. Number four, I will put. Jonathan Banks, I wouldn't even put Tony Thompson in here because his post his post interview for uh, for the David Price he, he even said he don't worry about training, I mean, sit ups for what or run for what like I mean, you know. I mean this I mean this but he's Tony Thompson is showing you how shallow the, the heavyweight game is you know that he can just come off his toilet seat and just come and knock a guy out who who who, who you just a sensation you call it. Like, <laughs> In, in the UK, he didn't even wipe his ass. He got he got up in the, in the <laughs> ring and just and just beat just beat the crap out of David Price. Like. But with all due respect with Malik, I mean, it wasn't a long ago. I mean, he had thirty something fights and he was still fighting. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but I I think I think I understand why people duck Malik because it's a very awkward fight. And Malik is from this gym, by the way, and uh, he's, he's he he was trained by by Freddie Jenkins. And Fred, Fred started him out from how old, how old was he? Twelve. Yeah. You know, so so, and and, and Malik could tell you, Malik, you know, shout out, shout out to all he, he respect us, and at any given at any given time. So, uh, I mean, like this this, we 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 know why they duck Malik. You know, he's all for fighting. You know, we see what happened with the Glasgow. I mean, I I I think he clearly beat Glasgow, and he called it a draw. I don't know what that was about, but I mean it's just boxing. So welcome to the boxing game. But the simple fact that that they did that and and and, and we all we all really knew that he beat him. It was something about Malik that I knew that they wanted to keep away. So I mean it's all part of this. I don't want to get myself in trouble. So, but, but if you got offered a fight with Malik, <laughs> huh? If the money was there, if you got offered if, a fight with if, him, if the money was there, him 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 and I would we, we, come together. Or, I, or, or Chambers. Any, or anybody, <laughs> the money was right. Shit, you speak, you speak in my language. You talking about money, you know. But you know, all them, all them guys know I respect them, and um, you know, it's, you know, this is this is the fight game, and you know, I think they would do the same thing. They won't say, no, I ain't gonna fight you, by you. Nah, but how much? Oh, that's, that's a good, that's a good price, but I ain't gonna fight you. Nah, you ain't gonna hear that from nobody. You ain't gonna hear that from nobody. But uh, but yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, I would. You lost the contact when you were sparring? Did yeah. You fight in the context? Uh, no, I don't fight in context. Okay. I was supposed to take them off, and I would have just let it ride, but this is my last pair, and, uh, <laughs> and I need these to stretch. So So is it hard fighting without – I know you wear glasses. Yeah, I wear glasses, but I'm, um, I always get this messed up. I'm far-sighted, near-sighted, whatever. Can't I, can't, I can't see far. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, but that's why I, can see, I can see everything in front of me, okay. you know, 20, 30 feet in front of me. I probably can't read a sign from 30 feet away. Helps but, me work inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, helps me work inside. But I'm not, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not far-sighted the way it's always saying, is that you? Man, yeah. yeah, hear me. I'm not in the ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no. Get up in a guy's chair. Yeah, while well, I'm swinging the hook at the ref instead of my opponent. <laughs> <laughs> 
Many people are grateful for that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the rough. It looked like you were going for a knockout. Nah, far no, just I mean, no, you were, no, the no. way you were fighting. No, no, no. How much work do you get out of doing that? Uh, no, it's just the way it's the, it's the push. It's the push the way it's though I'll be able to operate, you know, in the later rounds, uh, at a high pace, at a fast pace. And, you know, just still to be conditioned and then to go back to the go back to the corner and, you know, and recover for those 30 seconds and come back out and do it all over again. I can do it for 20 rounds. What were the names of the guys that you were sparring today? Um, it was Omar Harris and Aaron. What's Aaron's last name, Fred? Uh, Aaron Ford. Huh? Aaron Ford. Aaron Ford. They, they, they just uh, people that Jim Aaron Aaron is definitely Aaron, Aaron just turned actually to, just turned pro before the draw, but uh, that's that's my work. And you're you're not working right now, right? You no, for the last two weeks, yeah, the last two weeks, and then one week after the fight, I'm on. And is there is the mindset still the same that you're not going to quit that until you know the money here is good enough? Yeah, yeah, because man, that, what if I what if I had my job? In between this this fight, wouldn't have it. You know, uh, it's a lot of other things that I can speak on, as far as that. But let's just say, <laughs> I need my job still. So yeah. It ain't, I ain't there yet. All right. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Appreciate Any more questions?